Hello, marine biology students. This week, we're going to talk about the impacts that humans have had on the marine environment. And so we're going to talk about the impacts that humans have had on habitats and also endangered species and conservation efforts this week. As humans, one of the things we do is to modify natural habitats. This often results in their destruction, and most habitat destruction occurs close to shore as a direct result of human development. Now, sometimes this is unplanned or sometimes just poorly planned development. Destruction of marine habitats is more acute in developing countries, but it is also common in developed countries as well. where you can clearly see this coastline is no longer performing the natural functions it did on the coast of Alabama before human development. One example of a habitat that we often destroy are coral reefs. Approximately one-fourth of all coral reefs have been lost or at risk. One-third of reef-building coral species now face extinction, and this can be from pollution. either from sewage, agricultural runoff, or sedimentation. Also comes from rising temperatures, from ocean acidification, by fishing with explosives, which is more common than you might guess and from the collection of organisms for the aquarium trade. Here in these images, we see an individual who is harvesting coral using a crowbar. Now this could be as building materials or it could be as souvenirs. In the next image, we see the results of coral bleaching. This bleaching is evidence that the coral is stressed either by temperatures or chemically the coral has decided to expel its zooxanthellae and hopefully replace it with something that will be better suited for the current environment. Another way we destroy habitats is through trawling. Trawling nets are a major threat to subtitled habitats. Bottom trawling is when nets are dragged along the bottom, causing resuspension of sediments, which can kill many suspension feeders as well as deposit feeders. But not only that, trawls can also break off attached organisms and totally disturb the soft bottom community, typically leading to destruction of that habitat. There's a short video clip from the animated movie Ponyo that can show you a bit of what this trawling looks like. It will be available after this video. Pollution is another way that humans harm habitats. Pollution is defined as the human introduction of a substance that reduces the quality of the environment. Most marine pollutants are actually the result of land-based activities. These sources of pollution include fertilizers, sewage, oil, and persistent toxic substances. So with fertilizers, land-based fertilizers, wash into streams and rivers and are carried into coastal waters. This can increase the nutrients in the water, known as eutrophication. And this eutrophication, in turn, causes phytoplankton to bloom and increases in the amount of bottom seaweeds. Here we see muddy water running off a farm field in Tennessee following a storm. The fertilizers in that field can wash off into these rivers and streams, which make their way to the oceans. And this would all be done in an untreated manner. 
As seaweeds take over the bottom in certain areas, and the phytoplankton die off after they bloom and drop to the bottom, the massive amounts of organic matter causes an increase in decomposition by bacteria. In this decomposition, oxygen is consumed, and anoxic conditions develop affecting all forms of life, often causing organisms not to be able to survive in that area, and the modal ones end up leaving. Phytoplankton blooms also can decrease the amount of light available for other producers. Domestic sewage. comes from homes and city buildings, as well as storm water runoff. And often, this will be treated in a wastewater plant of some sort, but that will vary based on community and based on economic status. Industrial sewage comes from factories and other manufacturing facilities, and it may contain a variety of substances. Sewage can also contain disease-causing organisms if it is untreated. It may also contain heavy metals and other toxic substances, even if that sewage is treated. One example of a biological molecule that builds up even in treated sewage is that of pseudo-hormones, and these pseudo-hormones can end up having drastic impacts on natural communities, and that's not a substance that's removed from sewage with our current water treatment methods. Oil pollution is another thing that can affect marine populations. Organisms can accumulate components of oil, many of which are toxic. These components can affect reproduction. Growth, development, behavior, and just survival in general. Often, endothermic organisms may die if their feathers or fur become coated with oil, and that reduces their ability to insulate themselves from the cold marine waters. Organisms living in estuaries, seagrass meadows, mangrove forests, and corals are also at risk if coated with oil. Here in this image, we see a sea turtle that's covered with oil that hopefully will be cleaned off by this individual helping after an oil spill. Now, it turns out that natural hydrocarbon seeps actually are the source of the largest amount of oil in the marine settings. But there are various land-based pollution and recreational boating which contributes a significant amount. The general transport of oil using tankers and other things and actually the smallest contributor to oil pollution in the marine environment is the actual exploration and extraction of oil. But blowouts and oil spills can have a significant impact on local communities if and when they occur. Persistent toxic substances are also a threat to the marine system. Pesticides can be an example. Substances that are released in one setting to control or kill organisms can have unintended impacts in other areas. Certain pesticides, such as DDT, can build up in marine birds and decrease reproductive success by making their eggshells very brittle. The brown pelican had its numbers significantly reduced because of DDT's use. And now that it's been banned, their numbers are coming back. Other examples of persistent toxic substances include chlorinated hydrocarbons, polychlorinated biphenols, and heavy metals. Chlorinated hydrocarbons dissolve 
in lipids, and so they can be carried in the fats and lipids of organisms and are passed along the food chain. They can accumulate in the tissues of the top predators of these ecosystems because they are not biodegradable, and this is known as biological magnification. The levels of PCBs and heavy metals, such as mercury, lead, cadmium, and copper in the oceans continue to be a problem as well. There's also a process known as global distillation. in which the concentration of PCBs and heavy metals are found primarily in the polar regions where cold temperatures facilitate condensation of these chemicals brought in by the winds. So sometimes these populations that don't have much direct human contact are still negatively impacted by pollution generated by humans hundreds, even thousands of miles away. Other pollutants include solid wastes, particularly plastics, microplastics, are of particular concern, and they can come from things such as toothpaste and pharmaceuticals, but most importantly, recently discovered degradation of macroplastics will result in microplastics that impact communities. Other examples of pollution include thermal pollution, where water that is used to cool certain sections of power plants are then returned back to the environment much hotter than they were previously. And this can have dramatic impact on the local communities and the general temperature of that water basin. Desalinization plants run through reverse osmosis to generate pure drinking water for humans, but this results in highly concentrated salty brine that is returned back to the marine ecosystem often to the detriment of the local marine communities. Radioactive wastes. Whether from nuclear accidents or wastes dumped at sea or even sunken nuclear-powered submarines and ships can also affect marine environments, harming the organisms. And so that takes us to the end of our discussion of the impacts that humans have had on marine environments. Before our next video, I would like you to think about what organism would you really be sad if it no longer existed? We'll talk about that in the next video. See you then.